Olivia, Donna Gabriella, Grandma. And Angel Ant is reading Peyton. Jim playing Joe. Uh, Mike Anthony Smith, and I'm reading Dr. Dave uh, Zico. 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 Uh, immigration officer and Francisco. I'm Sarah Rose Carr, and I'm reading narration. <laughs> Give me a beer. Dr. Dave goes to get a beer for Joe, who sits at the bar, who sits at the bar stool near Pagan. Joe takes out a 45 caliber gun out of his rucksack and places it almost lovingly on the bar. My name is Joe. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Pagan hesitates. Alma. Alma. Mmm, that's a nice womanly name. <laughs> well, Alma, I reckon I'm just gonna tie you up and take you home. <laughs> You're gonna be my slave. This is love at first sight. I love you. You're beautiful. Yep, you're gonna be in servitude as and when I crack the whip, babe, you're gonna <clears throat> jump. Pagan feels herself leaping out of her skin. Um, Joe, my man, you, you need to put that away. And I think the lady here would like to have her drink in peace, if you know what I mean. Joe ignores him. Dr. Dave uses his phone and dials 911. <laughs> yep, me and Donald Trump. <laughs> We've been talking. Uh -huh. Equal rights. My ass. Women's are inferior, and they know it. Who are they working for? The man. It's a man's world. From now on, all women's are going to be barefoot and pregnant from 16 to 60. All women's <clears throat> is good for is one thing. And I ain't good enough. Pagan smiles at Joe and casually reaches with her right hand and picks up the gun. The feel of the gun, the gun is comfortable, almost familiar somehow. How does it work? She puts the gun to Joe's temple. Like this? She cocks the gun. Like that. She presses the gun against Joe's forehead right between his eyes. Like this? Joe is too in shock to try and stop her. Forget about babies. People like you have no right to babies. Hmm. Besides which, you're giving me a headache. If you don't hush, I'll have to put you out of my misery. The police have come in silently through the kitchen door behind Pagan. One of them grabs her arm that holds the gun, pulling her backwards away from Joe. The cop wrestles Pagan to the ground and cuffs her hands behind her back. No, 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 she's the good guy. <laughs> he pulled the gun out and harassing her. She got the gun away from him. The police stare at Pagan. 
They uncuff her, they cuff Joe and read him his rights. Cut to interior pagan's dining room that evening. Zico, a handsome Latino man, pagan's boyfriend, sits at the dining table where dinner is laid out. Pagan paces. I need to get out of here for a while. I want to go someplace where I can come home and not have to worry about whether there's some maniac lurking in the bushes, waiting to jump me as I put my key in the door. Don't you think maybe you're overreacting a little? Please, don't patronize me, Zico. No, I do not think I'm overreacting. Look around you, for Christ's sakes. Killers are everywhere. Shopping malls, elementary schools. Teenagers are shooting each other. What is your point? <laughs> my point is, I don't want to live like this. I can't live like this. If I don't get away, I might become one of the killers. Okay, sweetie, let's work this through. Let's work through your fear and rage. Do you really think America's the problem? No, Zico. America is not the problem per se. The problem is me and my inability as a cross-cultural hybrid to figure out where I belong. And I can't resolve it here. I need to be somewhere else, and, and I, I can't do it. You're around. I need to be by myself. Into your pagan's bedroom night. Pagan and Zico are in bed having sex. There's no, there's no tenderness to their lovemaking. They are in fierce and brutal combat. As soon as they're done, the baby gets out of bed. What about us? Don't you see? There is no us. I'm not a whole person, Zico, and neither are you. You're just suspiciously, suspiciously well-adjusted. You deny your own roots, your Brazilian heritage. You close your eyes to the pain, to the outrageous misery in the world, the atrocities committed every day by human beings against other human beings. You're a desabaracido, and you don't even know it. Pagan, I'm not the enemy. Pagan's phone dings. It's a message on WhatsApp from Aunt Livia that says, your grandmother has suffered a stroke. Cut to into your Pagan's bedroom later that night. Pagan is finally asleep. In her dreams, she, sh she sees a woman with honey-colored skin and large, compassionate eyes who speaks. The enemy is anything that makes you less than yourself, or that in yourself which serves to diminish others. It is not a person or a thing. You cannot see it with your eyes. It has nothing to do with a particular place or culture. The enemy lurks within your very self. Therefore, you must fight the enemy from within. Who are you? My name is Saudade. Cut to interior Pagan's bedroom next morning. While packing, Pagan finds a leather choker with a stone pendant. She puts it on and feels a lump of longing in her throat. Cut to interior Zico's car later that afternoon. Zico's driving Pagan to the airport. Pagan rubs on the necklace and attempts to self-soothe. <coughs> there is a word in Portuguese for which there is no English equivalent. It is loss, yearning, or sweetness all at once. The word is sedaja. Cut to into your plane that night. Uh, Pagan reads um, African folk tales by Yvonne Lafayette. She looks out the window and notices the lights of Mumbai below her. Mumbai will always be Bombay to me. As the plane almost lands, she unconsciously wraps the shirt sleeve of the passenger, a man next to her. I'm sorry, I, I have a fear of flying. She closes her eyes and holds her breath. Cut to flashback into your San Francisco restaurant night. Pagan sits with her cousin, Carmen, a dynamic Indian-American woman, as they eat dinner. <laughs> you know, for someone who's terrified of flying, you sure fly a lot. <laughs> How long have you been an international journalist now? Nine years. Isn't it depressing, reporting on the civil unrest in, where was it? Angola and Mozambique. Yeah. There are thousands of people getting killed and mangled by landmines. Working in that area is taking its toll on them. Cut to interior Mumbai airport soon after. <coughs> Pagan walks up to the counter where an oily Indian man, the immigration officer, leers at her. He makes a show of intently examining her passport. He points her passport picture. This is yourself, madam. Pagan nods. Cut to 
interior, veranda of airy beach bungalow, Gaia evening. Pagan is sitting with her Aunt Lavia, an Indian woman, sipping masala tea. Pagan takes in the waves and palm trees. How is she doing, Aunt Lavia? As well as can be expected. But you should go to bed now, darling. You can barely keep your eyes open. We'll catch up on everything tomorrow. Cut to into your guest bedroom soon after. Hagen is in bed. She notices a decanter of water covered by a, covered with a white napkin. Next to it is a glass embossed with the face of Mickey Mouse. Hagen imp impulsively covers the glass with a napkin. When she closes her eyes, she sees. Cut to flashback 30 years ago. Into your Aunt Sarah's house, Alabama, kitchen morning. Five-year-old Hagen is watching her Aunt Sarah, a southern blonde Caucasian woman who is standing at the <laughs> stove. Your cousin Meredith is at her piano lesson. Aunt Sarah stirs chocolate in a shiny pot on the stove. I'll bake you some hot chocolate. Hagen sits in a chair that's directly in the sunlight. Land sakes, honey, get out of the sun. You better praise the good Lord your skin didn't turn out like the color of your daddy's. <laughs> I'd swear, just looking at you, I'd swear your daddy was someone else entirely with your green eyes and all. Hagen tries to smile but can't manage it. You know what hell is, honey? No? Well, hell is a terrible, ugly place where the devil is, honey. It's where God sends you if you're bad. That's where uh, Catholics and Hindus go. <laughs> Do you hear me, honey? Your father is both things, a Catholic and a Hindu, and it's just too bad because he's such a nice man. But hell is where he's going to end up, just like the rest of the sinners, Jews, and coloreds. <laughs> Aunt Sarah sighs and pours the hot chocolate into a mug with a picture of Mickey Mouse on it. Pagan looks confused. <laughs> you see these bubbles in the hot chocolate, honey? Well, that's what happens to your blood when you're in hell. It boils you, and you end up with blisters all over your body. It hurts real bad. Pagan starts to cry. Aunt Sarah smiles. I'm just, I'm just trying to save you, honey. Hagen's young cousin Meredith, nine years old and blonde, explodes into the kitchen. You two run along and play. Meredith grabs Hagen's hand and they run up the stairs. Cut to into your Aunt Sarah's attic moments later. Don't cry. All you have to do is save yourself from Satan. <laughs> is go to the ch Baptist church and, and let the minister pray over you. Hagen stops crying a little. It is too late to save your father. He is beyond redemption. But you are still young enough to give up life as a sinner, repent, and be saved. Pagan nods okay. Cut to into your Aunt Sarah's kitchen soon after. Meredith leads Pagan into the kitchen back to Aunt Sarah. My cousin is ready to be saved. There is a knock and Pagan's mother, Katie, a Caucasian woman, and Pagan's da dad, Francisco, an Indian man, enter. Cut to into your Pagan's childhood room later, middle of the night. Pagan wakes up screaming from a nightmare. <laughs> Francesco runs in. He rocks her gently in his arms. Katie stands on the side. What's wrong? What's wrong with her? Daddy, Mickey Mouse is trying to get you. It's all that violence on TV. Cut to present into your hospital room, Goya, the next morning. Pagan walks into a white room and sees her grandmother, Donna Gabriella, an old Indian woman laying in bed, propped up by pillows. Pagan is taken aback by how old and weak her once powerful grandmother looks. She tries to hide it. How are you feeling today, Grandma? She doesn't answer. You don't recognize me, do you? Who, who are you? Lavia comes over to a de dejected Pagan. It's not that she does not recognize you. You let yourself get so tanned. She does not want to acknowledge your skin. Blackout, and that's all for now.